Fresh off the boat like tilapia, I'm Gayru and I'm here to talk about some water decks. So we're just gonna jump right into the deck list. So our first monster is Fishborg Launcher, a level one tuner, then three Butunical Princess, one level three Oyster Meister, which we will pair up with our level four tuner, Royal Swamp Eel, and then we have three Summoner Monks, and then following that, nine Extenders, three Silent Anglers, three White Stingrays, and three Shithanas. Following that, two Buzzsaw Sharks, our one card XYZ, and then three Lifeless Leaf Fish. Then our last two monsters, Super Ancient Deep Sea King Coelacanth. Next up are 14 spell cards, Monster Reborn, Foolish Burial, Pot of Avaritze, Instant Fusion, which we will use as an extender into Mud Dragon, and one for one. Following that, three White Mirror and three Fury of Kairoshen, and then Piri Reese Map, two Called by the Graves, which is very much needed in this deck because we are going to be very susceptible to interruptions, and then one Torrential Tribute. Moving on to the extra deck, we have Mud Dragon, which can be replaced with Rare Fish. It really makes absolutely no difference in this deck. Then we have Monoceros. Following that is our three big negates, Savage Dragon, Emancipator Rising Drag Egg, and Totally Awesome. Bahamut Shark, whose only purpose is to summon Totally Awesome, Dweller, Baguska, if we don't get the right cards in our hand, we can use it to stall. Following that is Dugaris, a very important card for this deck. Next up is Stealth Kragen and Stealth Kragen Spawn, both used to pop your opponents and interrupt them. Link Karibo, whose purpose is to replace a token. And Codebreaker Virus, just a generic 2 Link monster. Next, Saryuja, and finally, our monster negate, Appaloosa. And that's it guys. So what we have here is a deck that revolves around Super Ancient Deep Sea King Coelacanth. It has an effect that at the cost of discarding one card, you can special summon as many level 4 or lower fish monsters as possible from your deck. And because it's not a hard once per turn, we can loop its effect. We can use its effect, remove it from the field, bring it back, and then use its effect again. It's a level 7, so it requires two tributes to summon. The most cost efficient way to get it onto the field though is by sending it to the graveyard and then special summoning it. And we have three main ways to get it into the graveyard. The first way is Lifeless Leaf Fish. When this card is summoned, it sends one fish from the deck to the graveyard. This card also banishes itself from the graveyard to shuffle three fish from the graveyard into the deck. Then we can draw one card. We will end up with many of these in our graveyard allowing us to essentially draw two cards in our following turns, giving us stronger follow-up plays. So we have many ways to search for lifeless leaf fish and special summon onto the field. We have Butuniful Princess, which searches for a level 4 or lower fish from our deck and special summons it to the field. We also have One for One, which at the cost of discarding one card, we can normal summon a level 1 monster from our deck, which we will use to special summon Butuniful Princess. And Piri Reese Map is another way to search for Butuniful Princess, but at the cost of half of our life points. It's worth it in the end because we need as many ways to get our little seaweed onto the field. We also have Summoner Monk, which at the cost of discarding one spell, you can then special summon a level 4 or lower monster from our deck. We'll use it to special summon Lifeless Leaf Fish. The second way to send Coelacanth to the graveyard is to use Foolish Burial. It sends any monster from our deck to the graveyard. And the third way involves discarding Coelacanth from our hand to the graveyard, either as a cost to special summon White Stingray or using One for One. Now that we have our big fish in the graveyard, we're going to have to special summon it. And our main way to do that is XZ's number 60, Dugaris the Timeless. Its second effect is the most important to us. At the cost of skipping our next main phase one, we can special summon one monster from our graveyard and defense position. We will also use Monster Reborn, a spell card that allows us to target one monster in either graveyard and special summons it, and White Aura Monoceros, a level seven fish synchro that allows us to special summon a fish from our graveyard upon being synchro summoned. Now that we know how to get Coelacanth into the graveyard and then onto the field, we can begin our combo. The first involves a hand with no Oyster Meister or Royal Swamp Eel. With this hand, we only have one way to start our combo. We normal summon Summoner Monk, 
We use its effect to discard one spell to special summon lifeless leaffish from the deck. We use its effect to then send Coelacanth from the deck to the graveyard and then we exe summon into the goddess. The goddess then detaches two materials to special summon Coelacanth from the graveyard to the field. We will need Fishborg Launcher later, but for now we'll discard it to the graveyard to activate Coelacanth's effect. This is the start of our first loop. Coelacanth will then special summon Oystermeister and Royal Swamp Eel and two level 4 fish. The two level 4 fish will exe summon into Bahamut Shark, which will then detach a material to special summon Totally Awesome. At this point we can send Coelacanth into the graveyard by link summoning it and Dugatis into any generic Link 2 monster. We will then bring Coelacanth back onto the field by using Oystermeister and Royal Swamp Eel to Synchro Summon into White Aura Monoceros. Oystermeister starts Chain Link 1, Monoceros then starts Chain Link 2. Chains resolve themselves in reverse, so Monoceros' effect will activate first, sending Coelacanth from the graveyard to the field. Oystermeister then special summons a token when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. We'll turn our token into a Link Aribo. And then we'll Link Summon with our Link Monsters, White Aura Monoceros, and Bahamut Shark into an Appaloosa. And remember that Fishborg Launcher? We're going to use Lifeless Leaf Fish to shuffle our tuners back into the deck. And then we'll draw a card. This will be the start of our second loop. Coelacanth Special Summons, Royal Swamp Eel, a level 4 fish, and Fishborg Launcher. Launcher and Coelacanth will Synchro Summon into Emancipator, Ryzen, Dragite. And then we'll use Royal Swamp Eel and our level 4 fish to Synchro Summon into our final combo piece, Borrowload Savage Dragon, which will then equip one Link Monster from our graveyard and then gain a number of negates equal to the Link Monster's Link rating. This is our final end board. It has a total of 8 negates, 4 Monster Negates from Appaloosa, 3 Omni Negates, 1 from Totally Awesome and 2 from Borrowload Savage Dragon, and 1 Spell Trap Negate from Admancipator Rising Dragite. If Oyster or Swamp Eel is in our starting hand and we are not locked out of special summoning because of Silent Angler, then we must use a second standard combo. This will involve shuffling Oystermeister back into our deck, so we can special summon it later. If you control no effect monsters on the field, you can special summon Shathana. Lifeless Leaffish will send Coelacan to the graveyard. Then we will Exe summon into Dagaris. Zagardus detaches two materials and brings our Coelacanth onto the field. This will be the start of our first loop using Coelacanth's effect. Coelacanth will discard one card as a cost to activate its effect. We will then special summon four level 4 fish from our deck, two white stingrays, and two lifeless leaf fish. We want to get as many lifeless leaf fish out of our deck and into the graveyard, so then we can use their effects in the graveyard now we will special summon Bahamut Shark using our two Stingrays. Bahamut Shark will detach one material to special summon Totally Awesome from the extra deck. We will then use our big fish and our extra deck monsters to link summon into Saruja. Toyuja and Toad will both activate their effects. We will use Toad's effect to bring Coelacanth from the graveyard to our hand. Soryuja's effect will now resolve. We'll draw 4 cards and shuffle 3 back into the deck. We'll shuffle Eel and our Oystermeister back into the deck. And we'll keep our White Mirror because we'll be able to use that later to spam some more monsters on the field for our final end board. Saryuja has a second effect, which allows us to special summon one monster from our hand. Our big fish flops onto the field a second time, and now we can use our two lifeless leaf fish and exe summon into Abyss Dweller. And there we go guys, our second loop. Now we'll bring Oystermeister and Swamp Eel from our deck onto the field. We're also going to bring out Buzzsaw, because we're going to white mirror Buzzsaw onto the field later.
We do not want to make this mistake. We want to remove our big fish from the field before we special summon Monoceros. We'll link summon into a generic Link 2 using Saryuja and Coelacanth. And now we'll bring Coelacanth back onto the field by special summoning Monoceros using Royal Eel and Oystermeister. Big Fish flops onto the field a third time, and then we get an Oystermeister token. We'll switch out the Oyster token for a Link Karibo. And now we'll Link Summon again. This time we'll use Buzzsaw, our two Link Summons, and Monoceros to make a Link for Appaloosa. We'll need our tuner from the graveyard, so we'll use Lifeless Leaf Fish's effect to send our tuner and two other fish back to the deck. We'll keep Buzzsaw in the graveyard. We shuffle those three cards back into the deck, and then we draw one card. Loop three, here we go. We'll discard one card and grab our tuners out of our deck, a Fishborg Launcher, a Royal Swamp Eel, and a level four fish. And now we're almost done. We just need to finish off our combo pieces. Fishborg Launcher and Coelacanth will Synchro Summon into Dragite. And then Royal Swamp Eel and our level four fish will Synchro Summon into Borload Savage Dragon. And with Saryuja equipped to our Savage Dragon, we'll have a total of four counters for four Omni Negates. And now we're just one step away from our final combo piece. We use White Mirror to special summon Buzzsaw from our graveyard, and we draw a copy from our deck to our hand. Buzzsaw targets itself and then special summons a level four fish. We'll then Eggsy Summon into Stealth Kragen. Stealth Kragen hits the field and turns all of our monsters into water. And now that all of our monsters are water, every monster gets a 500 attack bonus thanks to Abyss Dweller's effect. And this is our final end board. It's very similar to our first combo, although we've substituted Totally Awesome for Abyss Dweller. Saryuja allowed us to draw four cards, increasing our odds of having extenders like White Mirror in our hand at the end of our combo, allowing us to extend our combo even further. Even if we were not able to summon Kragen, we would still have a total of 9 negates plus a graveyard negate. So welcome to the first replay. So looks like we have a good starting hand here, we can do something with this. So we're up against Christian. I really, really hate this deck. It's usually an auto lose if we go second. If they can get out their Herald of Perfection or Herald of Ultimateness. Unfortunately, we don't have any hand traps to interrupt them. But you could run things like Max C in this deck. And thank the Egyptian God cards, you guys. It looks like they were not able to get out their ritual summoned Herald of Hell. So we just might be able to pull this off. We did get hit with their hand trap. Two of them. But we didn't use our normal summon yet. So we will be able to play through that. And they have another one. We're going to bait it with Buzzsaw. Perfect. And then we use our normal summon. We are going to take the maxi challenge because this is turn two and we can just plow right through those defenses. So 
so we're gonna summon Toad here. So we're gonna try to get our Totally Awesome onto the field as soon as possible. Bahamut Shark will detach one material, bring it onto the field. I suspect they have other hand traps in their deck, Nibiru, Ash Blossoms, and we're gonna need resistance to that. So we activate Monoceros' effect, it brings Coelacanth right back onto the field, and then we get our little Oyster token. Normally here you would turn the token into Link Karibo and then go into Appaloosa, but I just went straight into Saryujo. I like that extra draw. We do get negated here, but we have our Totally Awesome. I am in a bit of a rush here to try to finish off the match as quickly as possible in case they have Nibiru. It was a bit of a misplay to go into Dragite first before our Savage Dragon, because Savage Dragon can negate any hand trap. We're about to give them a baptism right now. Back to hell, Drytron. So our next matchup is against Dragon Maids. We do have our tuner in our hand. They have two back rows, so we're not going to go straight into our combo. Instead, we're going to see if we can bait out their back row. Because, you know, we do have Monster Reborn in our hand, and since we have Coelacanth in the graveyard, we can bring it out using Monster Reborn. We don't have to go into Dagaris. It looks bad for us, but it's not. This is exactly what we wanted. They've used up all of their back row. So in our main phase two, we can safely use Monster Reborn. Big Fish flops onto the field and uses the effect without facing any interruption. Since we do have our tuner in our hand, we're gonna bring out Totally Awesome first and then use Saryuja to shuffle our tuner back into our deck. Toad brings our Coelacanth back to our hand, then we use Saryuja's effect to bring our Coelacanth from our hand to the field. We activate Lifeless Leaffish's effect to shuffle three cards into our deck to draw one card. And then we discard one card to activate Coelacanth's effect. We Synchro Summon into Monoceros who brings Coelacanth back to the field. We turn our token into Link Karibo. And then we're going to go straight into Appaloosa. And now we can activate Coelacanth effect again. And this time we'll bring out Dragite. And then Abyss Dweller. And our opponent concedes. So we're pretty much just going straight through the standard combo. Our opponent has no hand traps.
So we're going to go the Saryuja route and bring Steelacanth from our hand to the field. We're going to use Toad's Effect to bring Launcher from our graveyard to our hand so we can shuffle it back into our deck. And go to a Abyss Dweller. I really like having Fury of Kairish in my hand because I know I can discard it with Coelacanth's effect and all my water monsters will be protected by card destruction. We have Dragite and Savage Dragon now on the field. And now that we have Buzzsaw in the graveyard, we can bring Buzzsaw into the field. And now we have Stealth Kragen on the field. All of our monsters are now water and are protected from card destruction from our Fury of Kyrushin in the graveyard. Nope, we are not playing chicken game with you today. Oh, I did not realize I was facing Exodia, but we're going to have to pop that card right now in case they have another Bamboo Sword in their hand. And we take the win. So we're just going to skip the Solitaire because I know you guys are tired of watching me do that combo. And Fury of Kyrushin protects us from card effects. And we're up against Blue Eyes. Pop. Negate. And this is how pretty much all games go, you guys. Just they want to turn, we say no, and then we just take the win. And good game. I am on a 16 win streak. I have my full end board out on the field. It looks like I might have it in the bag. It looks like my opponent is thinking very, very hard right now, probably reading all of my cards. Yup, and it looks like he was thinking very hard about which cards to remove from my field with Lava Golem. So we're just gonna dig through our graveyard and add a fish to our hand for some follow-up play. Dragite and Savage Dragon still give us two negates this turn. So either they're trying to bait me with that Feather Duster, or they actually believe they can remove the counters from Savage Dragon. So it looks like they were trying to bait me, because they only have one Kaiju in their hand. They use their Field Spell, crossing their fingers, hoping I wouldn't negate it, but we pop it with Savage Dragon, and it's GG. It wouldn't be right to show you a 17 win streak without showing you how I lost it. As you can see, another Lava Golem. We also get hit with Infinite Impermanence, making Opelousa completely useless for the rest of the game. I did misplay here by not moving Lava Golem into attack position, but as you were about to find out, it really did not make any difference. So they tribute their monster to search for their field spell from their deck. I don't negate it because I suspect they have more than one. I hesitate, negate their field spell anyway, And surprise, Pikachu face, they use their second field spell. They special summon all of their Numeran gates, and it's GG from here. And that's all, folks. If you have any suggestions on how to improve the deck, please leave a comment. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!